guys, it's Robert Arwai and Justin Locking from Brian Real Estate with another edition of the Bayside Property News for 2020, where the real estate information is on the house. It's a new financial year and it's time for where many of us will measure our financial performance against the goals that we set 12 months earlier. We in the real estate profession like to compare what was a better investment in 2020. Was it a residential or a stock market and property? Property and financial year 2019-2020 was the star performer as the growth shows. Overall residential property returned a total of 11.4% on average for a residential house. When considering both the capital growth and rental income achieved and the results for apartments was even better with an overall return of 12.3%. Whereas the S&P 200 ASX index for stock market fell on average 7.2% when considering the share price growth and dividends received. With the beginning of each month, we love to review the home price data captured for the month of June from CoreLogic. And as illustrated in the graph, national prices were down 0.7% in the month of June. Each of the five largest capital cities recorded a decline in home values over the month, with Melbourne experiencing a drop of 1.1% in Melbourne, with the median house price declining by $3,269 to $683,529. Although this drop is the biggest fall we've had experienced in home prices in 16 months, prices from Melbourne are still up 10.2% over the year from June 2019, which illustrates the market is still a much better to be selling compared to the market conditions during the Banking Royal Commission. The weekly numbers saw auctions in Victoria continue to climb with 467 auction results captured, with 53 selling prior and 232 selling under the hammer. 8 selling after with 149 passing in, giving us a clearance rate of just over 62.7%. From a private sale perspective, we saw a highest number of sales with 1,143 selling for the week. The year also brings a renewed series of support. The second COVID-19 economic payment of $750 will be paid in July. And for those who are eligible and in need of further assistance available in their superannuation. There is a, there is a minimum wage increase of up to $750 per week and $10,000 placements for the first home deposit loan scheme. The new year also brings about new fees and insurance policies, utilities and then other support incentives, like the conclusion of the childcare program during July 12. No doubt we are all aware that state tree lockdown measurements introduced for the 10 postcodes across our west, northwest and northern suburbs until the 29th of July. This is a wake-up call for all Victorians, and not just the residents of those 70 suburbs. It's a reminder that we cannot afford to be complacent. The only thing between us and the second wave is that we do next to and keep next and close to our families, friends and community safe. It is now more important than ever to continue to shop local and support your local businesses as they will navigate their way through these challenging times. That's all for the week. I'm Robert Iowice. And I'm Justin Locking from Brian Real Estate. Thank you for taking the time to review the week that was. And remember, Brian Real Estate is not a financial advisor. You should consider seeking independent legal advice, financial advice, taxation advice, and any other advice relating to your unique circumstances.